What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, I'm going to teach you all how I launch my ISF. Now before I start this video, let me remind you all of what my setup is. I have a 2012 Lexus ISF with Firestone Firehawk Indy 500s in the rear in 285 3019. I have an X-Force catback exhaust, and those are the only modifications that I have uh, power, power and grip wise for that, you know, help at the drag strip. So I'm going to set the rear tires to 26 to 28 PSI hot, and when you do that, the TPMS light will turn on. Next up, you are going to start your car. And then you're going to engage sport mode. And when you are driving on the track, I would recommend putting it in manual mode. You'll know you're, you're in this mode when sports on and the F is lit up on the screen there. Also, sometimes I'll turn off the AC too. And some people might think that that's a joke. Turn off, turn off the AC. How much power is that really going to save? especially on you know modern cars. Well, Siki Manufacturing, who makes headers for the ISF, actually did a video on this, and they ran their car on the dyno with the AC on and with the AC off. And if I remember correctly, it was, it was about a 10 horsepower difference between the two. All ran on, you know, pretty much back to back and whatnot. So there is a little bit of power to be had without uh, running the AC on. Usually I'll run when I'm sitting in line, but when I'm actually, uh, getting up to the uh, to the line to race, then I'll turn it off. And now the next thing you're gonna do is pull up to the pre-race spot where you're gonna wait for the cars that are at the line to go. And then you're gonna get a signal from the guy to do something like this, to spin your tires or just keep moving forward. All right, next up. And to turn off traction control completely on the ISF, you're gonna hold this button down for five seconds. And now that though, both those lights are on, your traction control is completely off. Now that traction control is completely off, I am going to put my left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, hold down on that left foot and kind of slowly ease into a little bit of gas on the accelerator, start getting those tires to spin a little bit, and you can do this for, you know, as long as you want. You can burn off all the rubber, uh, make a huge smoke pile, whatever you want to do. And then you can, you know, get, get, get your tires to what you see fit. I usually just do a quick, uh, quick spin and then go forward. Slowly let off that left brake when you want to start, you know, start moving forward. And the more gradual you do it, the less jerky it will be. So what I'm going to do next is turn traction control back on, keep it completely on. And I do this at my track because it is not the most prepped track in the world. It's actually a concrete slab and on the right track and the left track is semi is semi prepped. So you can get a little bit better grip over there. I want to confirm that there are two tracks at the drag strip that I go to the left side, which is a little bit more prepped and the right side, which is not as prepped and there's no advantage on the left or right lanes of either one of those tracks because they are prepped the same way. So I, I keep track and, traction control completely on. I have ran with it off, um, I've tried different combinations, but I seem to be able to get the best launch when I keep it on. Now I have gone to other tracks which are fully prepped and I can run it with traction control completely off. If you can do that and you are able to get the grip I recommend doing that because the car is not going to cut back any power because of slip, but because I do slip a little bit at this track when I take off, the traction control kind of kicks in and, you know, prevents wheel spin and helps me out to, you know, keep moving the car forward a little bit. So I'm going to move up. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to have the two uh, pre-stage and stage lights lit up. And those are the two top lights of the tree. You're going to move 
forward until you hit the first two lights you you know you're going to look up and they're going to be on two two top yellow lights then just slowly move a couple inches forward and then the stage lights will light up and that's when you know you're set when you're there i will um hold down the brake with my left foot and then i will kind of get everything kind of tight i, I guess is the best way term i could use to uh to uh, make sure that I'm launch ready. And I do that by just slow, or you know, just tapping the accelerator. So everything kind of locks up and feels tight. Get, gets it up to about maybe 1,000, 1,200 RPM. And then you can feel everything is like ready to go and it's just ready to move forward. I do launch my car at about 800 RPM. When you have the AC off and you're sitting at the light, your RPMs are gonna be sitting at around 500. So just lightly tap on that accelerator and kind of hold it at 800 RPM. Once you do that, you're gonna wait for the light to drop. And it will do that when you, your, your, your pre-stage and your stage lights are both lit up, your opponents are both lit up, and then the countdown begins. There will be the three yellow lights and green. Exhaust or axle back. First time racing him, so should be should be fun. And so there's a half second in between all those lights coming as they go down, and you're gonna watch them, and you are going to start to hit the accelerator when the third yellow light turns on. And people say, well, that's cheating. That's, uh, that, that, that's going ahead of green. That's not cheating. That's not going ahead of green because by the time your car actually starts moving, the green light will have lit. Now, if you do it too quick, obviously you will red light, but for the most part, if you put your foot down on that third yellow, you're going to be green and you're gonna have, if not gotten a perfect um, reaction time, one pretty, uh, you know, just a couple hundredths or even thousands of a second off. If you jump too quick, there will be a red light on there. And I've red lit a few times because I've jumped it because I'm just trying to time it correctly. And let me tell you, if you are not hitting the accelerator on the third yellow, you are already going to be too late because the person that's driving, if they have any idea what they're doing, they're they're they're, they're hitting the gas on the third yellow, and they're already going to be moving. Light timing is pretty huge, but um, that's going to take some practice, and you know you, you'll get that as you are going as you go ahead and uh, keep drag racing more and learning more about your car. But when that third light hits, I am hitting that accelerator and letting go of the brake at the same time. So this is my this is my uh, left foot, my brake foot. This is my accelerator foot kind of sitting there. As that third light hits, I'm doing this. And I'm kind of like, I, I'm, I'm putting some force into my accelerating in my right foot to, uh, you know, hit the gas when I'm going down. It's not gradual. It's more just a very quick like that, um, quick uh, switch. And I'm, my foot is all the way to the floor. Uh, you can probably hear it. You probably hear the pedal in some of my videos, how hard it hits that ground because I hit it and then I go and the traction control will help with the wheel spin. Then I just start, you know, I go, I start, I start moving, I start going and you will, you'll hear on my videos the uh during the gear changes when do when people ask when do i shift i have the lights because i have a 2012 and the beep that goes on i shift right after the beep and it's i'm hitting red line on first gear second gear there we go Woo get up to first you know Hit that lever on the steering wheel, switch to second, do the same thing all the way up to the top of second, and then to third. And then you're going to be crossing the finish line on the eighth at the top of third. So just hold third the whole way through. 
Now, if you are racing a quarter mile, you're going to go into fourth gear and then you sh you'll be crossing uh, the finish line right at the top of fourth redlining. Um, some people have, you know, gone into fifth gear, but it's kind of one of those, what should I do? Hold it at red line in fourth or switch to fifth gear kind of things. You're going to have to figure that out for yourself. What you like, what you do, depending on your car's setup. You need to go to the drag strip. Go there and practice. Practice, practice, practice. Get your seat time in and find out what combination works for you because that's the only way you're going to become a better driver at the drag strip is if you go and make it a habit and you know do it as many times as you can because then you will it'll be almost like muscle memory when you're there and that's that's almost what the point uh, uh the point that i'm at right now is i can go there and i can pretty much do this in my with my eyes closed but um yeah so I really hope that you find this video helpful. I hope it's kind of given you some insight into how I am able to, uh, or what I do to drive my car and do what I do. So thank you for watching. Uh, give me some feedback on the bottom uh, in the comment section and let me know what else you all want to see. So thank you again for everybody for watching and uh, we'll see you at the next one.